Hey everybody, in this video we've got another community poll recap. This is number nine, so let's get right into it. Let's get on the community tab. We're going to take a look at all the polls that are at least one month old. Some of them get more attention than others, but I do put one up every three days. I do a variety of political, electoral, or cultural related topics. Lots of great comments on different sides, plenty of feedback. That's great. Let's keep it up. And the oldest one we've got here is do you favor having open or closed primaries? 63% say open. 23% say closed. 14% are neutral or have no opinion. So a clear majority say open primaries. And that would mean anybody, regardless of political party, can vote in either party's primary. And then there's closed primaries where you have to be a registered member of that party to participate in the primary. And then there's also semi-open primaries that wasn't factored in here. That's where independents, they can vote in one party's primary. But of course, it's always one vote per primary per election. My own view on this is I don't care for open primaries. If you have a political party or any kind of a club, you should have to be a member to influence that vote. If you're an independent, I think that could work out. But if you have a general election that is overwhelmingly Democrat or Republican, I wouldn't want one side to cross over and support a candidate from the opposite party that they either think is weaker or that they would rather go up against in the general election. That to me just doesn't work. You should be able to freely change your registration. But in the simplest terms, I don't think a Democrat or a Republican should be able to vote on the other side. Looks like most of you disagree agree that's fine we're all going to have our own views next will bernie sanders run for re-election 64 percent say yes 36 percent say no there's no middle ground here it's close to a two to one in favor of yes he hasn't decided yet he is in his 80s now he absolutely could decide to retire wouldn't surprise me one bit he might have one more race in him i'm not sure he already saw patrick Leahy retire and they're almost the same age sanders might follow suit i'm kind of in the middle on this i could see it either way next what is your opinion of robert F. Kennedy Jr. This one is all over the place. 9% very favorable, 23% favorable, 22% neutral, 21% unfavorable, 25% very unfavorable. So that's about 32% favorable, 46% unfavorable, with the rest in the middle. And the comments are passionate on this. If you're a regular establishment Democrat against Donald Trump, generally you really hate this guy. Some of you are going to point to his stance on vaccines or some of the comments he's made over the past couple of months. That's fair if you don't like a couple of things about him, but generally I think most of his views, certainly up until very recently, align with the Democratic Party. And I know on either side, when there's a candidate that has just one or two views that go against the grain, somehow that's viewed as unacceptable, and those people get smeared and not taken seriously. So I think the hatred for Kennedy is overblown. I do think a lot of the mainstream media feels that they can only portray him in a negative light. Of course, if they portray him in a positive light, that's going to be more of a threat to Biden, and they don't want that. So you could go on and on about this. It's it's polarizing. He does have some Republican appeal, but I also think he has appeal to disaffected voters that don't want to have all their views fit neatly into one box. The next question is, how important are the recent IRS whistleblowers allegations slash testimony? We've got 52% that say very important, 10% moderately important, 9% slightly, 15% not important, 14% no opinion or not sure. Like with most political stories these days, it's really astounding how both sides have the exact opposite reaction to whatever is happening. This was related to Hunter Biden getting a lesser sentence that was sought out to get, and I think it's at least somewhat important. Everybody in the abstract seems to hate favorable treatment unless it's someone they like. Then there's all kinds of rationalizations, but from the reactions I've seen to this, Democrats think it's absolutely nothing. Same with anything related to Hunter Biden. Republicans think this is a huge deal. It's really an unsatisfying stalemate in my opinion, but the results here seem to indicate this is important. Next question, 2024 swing for president and Pennsylvania compared to its 1.2% Democrat margin in 2020. So the results here show a little bit of a slant toward the Democrats. 13% think it's going to go three or more toward the Democrats. 32% think one to 2.9 for the Democrats. 35% think less than a one point change. 15% think a shift of one to 2.9 for the Republicans. And 5% think it's going to swing three or more toward the GOP. So Pennsylvania, it's going to be a key state. For me, I have no idea which way this state is going to swing. If we go by 2016 and 2020, it's going to be an absolute nail biter down to the very end. If we go by the midterms, then it looks like it's going to go toward the Democrats. I think in politics, things tend to stay the same until they don't. It could go toward the Democrats by one or two. The national environment could be red. Trump could have an unexpected turnout. It could go back in his direction. Tough to say. So we'll move on to the next question. What is your opinion on the legality of hormonal treatment slash gender affirming care for those under 18? 12% strongly support. Another 
12 support, 14% neutral, 11% opposed, and the clear winner, 51% strongly opposed. This is another passionate topic, and of course there's going to be some unknowns. If any of this stuff is remotely permanent, then I think the opposition is going to be very high, and I do think that's going to be up for debate. I've heard people say some of this is completely reversible, I've heard people say it's not at all reversible, but I think most people view someone under 18 as being incapable of fully making important decisions like that. Sometimes parental consent, it's not enough if these are dangerous, experimental, or irreversible treatments. So I understand the opposition. Personally, I'm highly in favor of all the attention for mental health, the physical stuff. It's hard for me to be in favor of it, but I do think the people that are opposed frequently get maligned as having no compassion or being bigoted. Going that far that direction is something I completely disagree with. I think you can have compassion and concern and still think this is not something you should do until you're over 18. Next question, what should the voter threshold be to approve an amendment to a state constitution? This was asked because Ohio had the referendum to change their voter threshold from 50 to 60. It failed. The results here, 40% think it should be 50% plus one, 5% say 55%, 22% say 60%, 29% say two thirds, 66.67, 4% say other or no opinion. And I did a whole video on this, but this one got completely politicized, probably due to the upcoming abortion amendment. But in the abstract, amending any constitution, the U.S. or a state constitution, those are the fundamentals that should require overwhelming consensus. Now, separate from this question, gathering signatures from all of Ohio's 88 counties, that I think is a significant factor as to why that referendum failed. I think if it's 50%, you should get signatures from 50% of the counties. If it's 60%, you should get them from 60% of the counties and so on. But as far as this, taking out all the politics, taking out Ohio, if you're starting from scratch, the Constitution should have a higher bar. Otherwise, we've already got the state legislator and there's other statewide referendums. Then you also have to be concerned about the exact wording if you're going to change the Constitution. That is something to be concerned about. But if there's no ambiguity, then I can understand these results of wanting it more than 50%. Next question, what is your opinion of Cornell West? 8% very favorable, 14 favorable. The winner, 46% are neutral, 18% unfavorable, 15% very unfavorable. This is another one where I think a lot of Democrats might say unfavorable because of the perception that it would help Donald Trump. Republicans might do the opposite and say they like him because it'll help Trump. But a lot of people probably just don't really know who he is. He's going to be in the progressive Marianne Williamson direction. I think he is going to have some populist economics that would get wide support, tackling income inequality, expanding health care, workers' rights, etc. Universal programs, I think that would be popular. But I also think he would lose support when he goes hard on his social justice direction, when he's talking about reparations or increasing focus on race or identity and try to craft that into public policy. That I'm going to be against. That's what I think most people would be against. But usually West is respected. A lot of Democrats like him. But given that he's trying to run for the Green Party, he's going to be viewed as a fringe candidate. He's not going to be taken seriously, except when viewed as a threat to Joe Biden. Let's go to the next question. How concerned are you about the future negative impacts of artificial intelligence? 41% very concerned. 37% moderately. 17 slightly. Only 6% not concerned. This is kind of open-ended. There's probably a ton that's going to happen with AI over the next couple of decades, and I do think there's reason to be concerned. Right now, people are already concerned about deep fakes, seeing things that didn't actually happen. That's probably one of the biggest concerns. If you can be shown to do something you never did, there's plenty of positive and fun aspects to it, but the concern is real. How we're going to legislate it, that is highly concerning. It's bound to be politicized, and I think the unknown nature of it is probably one of the bigger concerns. The last question is, 2024 swing for president in Iowa compared to its 8.2% GOP margin in 2020. We've got 6% that think it's going to go toward the Democrats by 3 or more. 7% think 1 to 2.9. 18% think less than a 1% change. 38% think it's going to go toward the Republicans by 1 to 2.9. And 31% think it's going to go three or more toward the GOP. I just did a recent video on this. Looks like Iowa might be going into safe Republican territory. Most of you tend to agree that it's going to take a decent shift toward the right. I could see it happening. But again, if it is Trump with all that baggage, if it's a neutral or blue leaning environment, then maybe it goes a couple of points toward the Democrats. But absent that, I can see it going a little bit toward the Republicans. Democrats have largely abandon it. And if it goes three or more, that is definitely more than I expected. And it's especially shocking considering the state voted for Obama twice. So anyway, that is a recap of the recent community polls. Again, thanks for the comments. There's a lot of different views out there. I usually read almost all the comments. Sometimes they get flagged by YouTube for whatever reason. Sometimes there's a great back and forth happening. Once in a while, there's some troll comments. But for the most part, a lot of different views represented.
wanted? Let me know in the comments. What do you think about any of these questions, any of these results, any surprises? Do you like these recap videos? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.